is Javan Johnson here. You're watching episode number 22 of About 10 Minutes. Hopefully you're having a great week thus far. On today's episode, I want to talk to you about the mind. You know, the way that we think and the mentality we approach life with can have a big impact on the way that we live our lives and the type of results we produce. Um, you know, whether it's in our careers, whether it's in our family life, and, uh, and definitely with our walk with Jesus Christ. And so I really want to talk about the mindset that we should approach life with. First and foremost, we need to have our priorities in check. We need to we need to keep God first, and it's obviously that's something that we say. But we need to make sure that He's really Lord of our lives. You know, we need to make sure that we're not just doing what we want to do, but that we're doing what He says to do. What can happen sometimes is people can disqualify themselves from something. They, you know, God can have have put something on the inside of them, and they can just sell themselves short and be like, "Oh, I don't think I can do this." It's important that we that we have our identity in Christ and Jesus Christ, and then we're seeking Him. You know, and then we develop that mindset that we are focused on, okay, first and foremost, this is about living for Jesus Christ. That's the mindset I need to have each and every day. Yes, I love my family. Yes, I love my friends. There are things I enjoy to do. But first and foremost, my mind needs to be focused on doing the things of God. A lot of times, like, you know, you see examples of people who are mentally tough in sports, you know. They, they were just, like, you know, there were people that may be real clutch. You may be like, man, that player is clutch. They want the ball at the end of the game. They're not scared to take the final shot because they have confidence in their ability. Like, so much of, like, athletics is mental. It's a lot of it's a lot of the physical element, but so much of it is mental. I can remember at a job that I worked in the past, there was a phrase that was that was taught there, uh, mind share equals market share. And basically the school of thought was, you know, if a company increases their mind share or, or so to speak, real estate, you know, in people's minds, if they can get more messages in people's minds and they can increase their market share. And so whether you realize it or not, I mean, we're constantly bombarded with different types of messages, whether it's on the internet, television, you know, out and about with billboards and things of that nature, we're constantly being bombarded with different messages. And so it's very important for us to examine, you know, what we're taking in, you know, and, and look at that real estate, so to speak. You know, if your mind was land, like how much real estate, you know, are you giving to the things of God? Sometimes people may say negative things about you. Sometimes they may do things that are hurtful, but it's important not to allow that to distract you or get you off the path that God has you on. You know, it comes with the territory. It's like playing basketball. You know, when you play basketball, one of the things that happens is sometimes people miss shots. None of the great players, Michael Jordan included, nobody has went through their entire career and not missed a shot. You know, if you can't deal with missing a shot, then you can't play basketball at a competitive level because it happens. You know, so it, it's part of, nobody really likes it, but it's a part of the game. Likewise, nobody really likes to be talked about. I don't think really people just really enjoy being talked about, but it's a part of life. It comes with the territory. Some people like you, some people don't, you know, but don't allow that to stop you from doing what God has called you to do. Don't allow that to get you depressed or, or discouraged, but stay focused on what God has told you to do. Stay on that path. You know, it's, it's a part of the game. You know, there's challenges with it, but you got to overcome those types of things. You got to overcome it and be strong. Be strong and courageous. Be bold and keep moving forward. What's going on? So I got something inside of this case right here. Before I open it up, can you guess what's inside of here? Anybody want to take any guesses? I'm about to take a little trip down memory lane. Boom, ba -bum. So this is my saxophone. Now, uh, before I even really start talking about this, like to anybody, if you can tell me what type of saxophone this is, send me a message via, you know, my Facebook page, my YouTube, and, um, and, and the first person who does it, I will send you a prize via email. So, uh, you know, when you send me your information, send me an email address and I'll send you a prize if you can tell me what type of saxophone this is. And what I mean by what type, I mean is, you know, like there's different types. I don't mean the brand, but I mean, do you think it's a soprano? Do you think it's an alto? Do you think it's a tenor? That type of thing. So, you get a good look at it, you know. I, I played this from the sixth to the ninth grade. And um, so, yeah, so it's a, it, the actual brand is a Bundy. And so that's, this is like, the thing about me, and this is a hint, like if you go back and check one of my old YouTube videos, back, back when I had a fro, I kind of talk about, you know, what type of saxophone I had, so uh, just give you a heads up. When I got to the sixth grade, you actually had to choose basically between being in the band or being in choir, and so I wanted to play the saxophone, like my dad actually played the saxophone in high school, and so I think that had a large uh, influence on me wanting to play the saxophone because my dad played, you know, so it was just like something that, that, that he did. So, um, so yeah, so it's, uh, just to give you a heads up, I'm not about to play this thing today, not right now. I literally have not played this thing since I was, man, probably about 15 years old. Like, uh, like right, you know, my after my freshman year, I, I was done playing it. Uh, I need to get um, 
some new reeds. Like it's basically the way this thing goes together. You know, you put put this in like so, and then you have your mouthpiece and stuff. You know, and then basically like. For those who aren't familiar, I got a couple different mouthpieces right here. So basically you put this, this, this is called, like, this is the mouthpiece, and then you put these wooden things on there called the reeds. And so when you put a reed on there, that's, that's what it looks like. And so it's like it's made out of wood, so that's why you get the term woodwinds. So if you ever heard of a saxophone called a woodwind, that's why it's uh, been called that. And like literally, I don't know how long this, re this, this has been on here. I don't know how long this reed has been on here, so I'm definitely not going to play this thing. Um, I'm not gonna even attempt to, to do this, you know. I don't, I don't even know how long it's been on there. It's a cool type of instrument, you know. You can get on here and, you know, put the put the strap on there, and you know, you strap it up and play like so. And I used to be, you know, we used to be playing. And uh, the cool thing about about like you know playing in a band is, I mean, for one, you get a chance to see how different instruments work together. And to this day, I mean, people who listen to my music, you probably can tell, like, I like horns, you know. I implement horns into, like, a lot of different things. Even going back to the very first album I was a part of, the compilation album, uh, back in 06. For those who really know my music, really been following, you remember the, the album, uh, The Way, The Truth, The Life, uh, with myself and three other brothers who was on that album. And so, like, even starting off that album, you can hear horns and stuff. So I really like horns. I like, literally, sixth grade was the first year, so I played... You know, sixth grade, then uh, seventh, eighth, and ninth grade. And the interesting thing is, just looking back in hindsight, like I mean, like this gave me some of like really the first experiences as far as playing like concerts and stuff. Now, obviously, it's a different type of set than when you know when you're doing like when you're rapping and stuff. But it literally gave me some experience with you know being being in concerts, and it also you know helped me just develop doing things in front of people. It's kind of like a team in a sense. You got a chance to you got a chance to travel. So it's cool, it's another cool thing, another cool way to, you know, to connect with people, meet people. Like when I had a band, like my first two years, sixth and seventh grade year, I believe I had the same teacher. Then my eighth grade year, I had a different teacher. And then my ninth grade year, I had a different teacher. And so just even different types of teaching styles and just different things that people uh, can convey and, and teach you. I mean, it's, it's a cool process, like, you know, when you can see yourself develop. It's kind of like on the athletic end, it's like when you lift weights. And then you see yourself like, uh, okay, I can put up more weight than I could like two, three weeks ago. You know, vice versa, you can start learning more fingerings and stuff. And so it, it's, it was, it's a cool, it was a cool time in my life. You know, and it's, it's just interesting. I was looking at it. And, you know, I'm like, who knows? Maybe one day I'll pull this thing back out and start playing it again. But the thing about it is, when you actually have like a, a synthesizer or a MIDI controller, you know, with sounds, in, you know, in your computer or on the disc or something like that, you pretty much can generate any sound you want. So brass. You can get brass, saxophones, you can get all that kind of stuff. And so really for me, like I can get a saxophone sound without playing it. And so it's like, you know, and I can do things a lot of times. I can go right into my computer, you know, and I don't have to worry about like trying to mic up mic the saxophone and all that kind of stuff. But it really is cool, like, you know, to actually play uh, live. So I don't know, maybe one day I will uh, play this thing live again. Who knows, we'll see what happens. Uh, but once again, if you can tell me what type of saxophone this is, like I said, what type, what type it is, you know, um, and I already gave you a hint, you know, but the three, three main ones it could be, you know, it could be a soprano, an alto, or a tenor. So, uh, if you can, if you, if you're the first person that, that tells me that, I will let you know. 